Hello, and welcome to this video where I'm going to share the secret to help you get unstuck if you feel like you've hit a plateau as you're preparing for your standardized test. Hi, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate Test Prep. This is a common concern. I hear this from my students, and you may feel this way as well. You were making progress. Things were going well as you started preparing for your standardized test, and then all of a sudden things stalled. You feel like you hit that plateau. Your practice test scores aren't going up anymore. And the question becomes, what do you do? How do you break through? How do you continue growing so that you can hit your target score on the GMAT or GRE, Executive Assessment, SAT, LSAT, doesn't matter. Whichever exam, and by the way, whichever creative pursuit you might be involved in in life, plateaus happen. And the secret, the key to breakthrough is the same in all areas. And it comes back to this growth formula that you see on your screen. And I'll spoil the last part of it, right? So the growth formula is S plus R equals G growth. How do we continue to grow? And for reference, I'll remind you of sort of the progress graph. For most students preparing for a standardized test, you know, over time you expect, or most students at least expect, growth to be somewhat linear. For every hour you put in, you improve a certain amount. You put in another hour, you continue to improve. But it just doesn't work that way, does it? Right? And what I have found working with thousands of students from all over the world is that you tend to see pretty rapid improvement fairly early on. You're learning new strategies, you're brushing off the math cobwebs, remembering some formulas that you hadn't seen forever. And then things maybe do feel like they start to stall a little bit. Maybe even you feel like you're starting to go backwards a little bit. And then eventually you do experience breakthrough. You will continue to grow but if you feel like you're in this area here and you're just not getting that breakthrough, it's not happening fast enough, what I would submit to you is that the key is, and part of the reason you have stalled is, that you've got something out of balance with this growth formula. So what is the growth formula? S plus R, right? Very simple, only two components. It's not like the quadratic equation or the circumference formula for a circle, all those other formulas you're learning for your standardized test, just an S and just an R. And the S stands for stress. So stress, two S's, is part of the growth formula. Let me give you an example. And I'm not talking about the type of stress where like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. My heart is racing and my blood pressure is going and I'm going to have an early heart attack because I'm so stressed, anxious, anxiety. Like, No, not that. I'm talking about good stress, putting some strain on your muscles or your mind in this case. But here's an analogy I think we can all relate to, right? So this is a little five pound dumbbell. It looks like a two maybe on your screen. Uh, but a little five pound dumbbell. Let's say I want bigger biceps, right? I want to curls for the girls, right? I want to, I'm going to stress my muscles, right? If I want my biceps to grow, I need to lift weights. I need to get a dumbbell and do a bunch of dumbbell curls until my muscles get bigger. But a couple things to say about this, right? First, I need an appropriate stress amount. This little five pound dumbbell is not going to get the job done for me not because I'm superhuman strong, right? Five pounds just isn't enough for me. On the flip side though, a hundred pound dumbbell is way too much. I can't even lift a hundred pound dumbbell, you know, for a bicep curl probably. And so I need the proper amount of stress, but I clearly have to stress my muscles. I have to break them down. If they are going to grow, I first need to stress them. And the same thing goes for our mind, by the way. You're not going to magically grow and do better on your standardized test if you don't work your brain, learn some formulas, um, read, study vocabulary, whatever, learn how to analyze arguments, do a whole bunch of practice problems, sit, study, you know, prepare. That's the stress that we're talking about. And I'm going to give you some, some additional thoughts around stress, how to, how to find that appropriate balance, how to do stress well. But clearly stress is part of what is required to grow. And a lot of times that's what's happening is you are stressing yourself in this early phase and you're seeing that growth. But what's the missing element? 
can I just do dumbbell curls every single day? I'm going to curl today. I'm going to curl tomorrow. I'm going to curl every day for the next year. Is that going to be good? Is that going to be healthy? Am I going to achieve the growth that I ideally want by doing that? No, not if you know anything about personal training and growing your muscles. The second component of the growth formula and the missing element I would submit for a lot of you and a lot of students preparing for the standardized test is the R component, which stands for rest rest. So it's stress plus rest equals growth. And this is the exact conversation I, I literally just recently this week had with a student of mine who was saying, you know, I feel like I feel like I'm burnt out. I'm cramming all this information in my brain. I've been going hard at this thing for about two weeks. She didn't have a lot of time before she was scheduled to take her exam. And she admitted she was burning the midnight oil, stress, 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 study, 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 no rest, no rest. And she said, yeah, I just feel like things are like clutter up in my mind. This is her words, but that's exactly what was probably going on. She said, it's just like, I, I believe it's all in there, but I just, I've plateaued. I, I can't process it all. I'm not, I'm not growing anymore. And my conversation to her was, it's time for you to actually focus a little bit on rest. Sometimes pulling back is actually key to moving forward, right? That's what eureka moments are. You hear about these breakthroughs. Well, when do those breakthroughs often happen? How often have you had a great idea in the shower? all the time, right? I, I'm always having good ideas in the shower, or if I'm going for a walk, if I'm literally on a hike in nature, right? Things will come to me for my business or other projects I'm working on, things I'm writing, podcasts I'm recording. I just have these great ideas, things for my family come to me when I'm not actively thinking about them. Now, sometimes it happens when I'm actively thinking, when I'm stressing, right? But a lot of times these breakthrough moments, these eureka moments, right? Writer's block, often is undone when writers aren't writing, when they're not trying to come up with new ideas. Same thing with musicians and artists and even businesses. The key for you might just be more rest because it is during that rest when your brain is able to filter all of the stress, all of the stuff that you have been learning and eventually you have those breakthrough moments. So man, that's my encouragement to you. That is the growth formula. That is the key, the secret sauce to getting unstuck. And just a couple interesting things to share with you. Like I said, you know, you can read all sorts of studies and details in the book. I actually did a lengthier podcast episode about this as well. I'll go ahead and post uh, post the link to that podcast episode. Uh, but But two quick things about stress and about rest. Stress is really interesting. You know, the book talks a lot about that perfect balance. You want a certain amount of stress that's at the sort of the upper limit of your abilities. Like with me, if I'm trying to grow my muscles, it's got to hurt a little bit, right? I've got to, it's got to be heavy enough that I've got to work hard to curl that thing. That's the way the muscles break down. Same thing for you. You, you don't want to just do a whole bunch of practice problems that you could do almost passively. Like they're too easy for you. On the flip side, you don't want to jump into the deep end of the pool and do the hardest stuff because, hey, I'm trying to get a 700 on the GMAT. I need to do hard problems. Yeah, but you kind of have to walk before you run. Like, don't jump in the deep end. Don't do stuff that's beyond your ability until you have grown to that ability, right? So you want to, but you want to push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit. But here's an interesting study I wanted to share with you about stress as well. And this is something that I think will apply for apply to you as you're preparing for your standardized test. They did an interesting study showing that our brain really sort of has a finite stress capacity, if that makes sense. They did a study where they divided a group of participants up into two groups, right? They brought them into a room where they had baked a whole bunch of fresh chocolate chip cookies. The room smelled like chocolate chip cookies. Everybody's mouth was watering. And here's what they said. Half of you, group A, you can eat as many cookies as you want. They're all yours. Go for it. The second group, they said, nope, sorry, you have to sit here. You've got to look at them. You can smell them. 
but you can't eat them. You have to resist them, but you can have these radishes instead. They say, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not evil. We're not going to deprive you. We know you're probably hungry. You can eat something. You just have to eat radishes. <laughs> so pretty cruel, right? But, but here's the point. They had to resist. And then they put these two groups of participants through a challenging mental exercise. And I'm going to just sort of read the results of this, right? So they put them through um, a difficult mental task. They had to problem solve. They had to try to solve a challenging problem. And it turns out it was an unsolvable problem. So even meaner, right? We're going to make you work on this problem and there's literally no solution to it. But the question was, how long would people persist? How long would they work? Would they strive at this task? And the group that had to resist didn't really persist very long. In fact, they only tried the problem for a little over eight minutes. So they're like, okay, I'll, I'll work on this for eight minutes. They made about 19 attempts. Okay, fine. And they eventually just sort of gave up. Then they gave the same impossible challenge, the impossible task to the group that was able to just eat the chocolate chip cookies. And that group stuck with the problem for over 20 minutes compared to the eight minutes for the other group, right? They worked at this thing for 20 minutes. They're engaged. They're working hard at it. They made 33 attempts before giving up. Man, what a stark difference. And the conclusion that the researchers came to is that the group, the group that had to resist the chocolate chip cookies was basically using brain power to do so. They had depleted their stores of, of capacity, of like mental capacity, mental energy resisting the chocolate chip cookies. And so they didn't have as much left to, for the stress of, of the task at hand. And they reproduced this study in a lot of various ways and basically came to that same conclusion. So I found that fascinating. And I think the direct application for you here is, as you're thinking about preparing for your standardized test, yes, stress, you know, you want to stress yourself appropriately, but you also want to try to limit unnecessary outside stress. Now, you can't block it all out, right? So you probably have work, you have family commitments and things like that. But let's try to reduce, especially in the days before your exam. Like, let's not get in a fight with your spouse. <laughs> you know, let's not buy a house or undertake some really hard new challenge right before your test day. Let's wait until after the exam to, to buy a house to get in a fight with your spouse. <laughs> no, I never advocate fighting with, with your spouse. But I think you get the idea, right? And by all means, don't go on a diet <laughs> right before your standardized test, right? Don't go resisting chocolate chip cookies too much before your standardized test. All right, I think you get the idea. But the other thing I wanted just to talk about is this idea of rest. How much should you rest? And, and the again, the book talks about lots of different ways to rest. You can do mindfulness meditation, taking naps, sleep is obviously important, walking in nature, interesting studies about the benefits of getting out in nature. Uh, but they also concluded and found, and this is just what I wanted to share with you here, that you can really only stress yourself for about one and a half to two hours at a time. So what that means is you need to be resting probably more often than you are. And by the way, this has applications at work. This has applications in any other pursuit that you might be, might be doing. So what a lot of students will do is they'll sit down to study for their standardized test and they'll say, okay, I'm going to block out three hours, four hours. Great. Great. Put in the time, but take some breaks. Maybe every hour, hour and a half, get up, move around, walk around. I'll actually share this with you. This was an interesting study where uh, participants in a study that got out in nature performed better in subsequent tasks than people who just took a break in their office, sitting at their desk. Okay, I'm going to take a break. I'll, I'll take a 15-minute break, uh, but I'm not going to perform as well as if I get up and I go to a park where I walk around out, you know, out in nature somehow. Now, you might be saying, well, I work in the middle of a concrete jungle, right? I'm in the middle of New York City or Chicago or whatever, right? I can't walk around in a park on my lunch break. 
Well, here's what they also found. If you just look at pictures of nature for 10 minutes, you'll perform better after taking a 10 minute break, looking at pictures, literally like on your computer screen, pictures of nature, you'll do better than if you look at pictures of urban landscapes. Literally, I found that fascinating as well. So, so things you do during your rest matter, but just taking the rest is important. So get up, move around, do something to rest yourself every hour and a half. But the other final application that I would say here is, for a lot of you, your standardized test is more than an hour and a half long. A lot of exams, the GMAT, GRE, are three or more hours long, maybe as much as four hours by the time you're writing the essay and so forth. So absolutely take your breaks. These exams have built-in breaks. Get up, walk around, stretch your legs. Don't just sit there at the computer screen. You know, do some things. Take your rest, but also train yourself mentally to be able to concentrate for longer periods of time. Yes, studies suggest that it's hard to continue to study and concentrate hard for more than about two hours. By the way, that's probably why some of you feel mentally tired. At the end of the exam, my students will say, I have a hard time concentrating on reading comprehension passages, for example. Uh, well, yeah, because your brain's not supposed to concentrate that hard for that long. Take your breaks, take your rest, and I think that you'll be able to concentrate better on the tail end of your exam. Uh, but I think you get the idea. So yes, if I am going to grow my biceps, kind of back to the initial, original analogy, I need to stress them but then I need to take some time off. I can't lift weights every single day or the same muscle group at least every single day. It's during the rest that my muscles rebuild. It's during the rest that they regrow to get stronger down the line. And I would submit to you, if you feel like you have hit a plateau, if you are here, and you're trying to get unstuck, there's something out of balance between your stress and your rest. And I would submit that for most of you, it's probably the rest piece that you are either neglecting, not doing enough of, and not getting right. And so what's the key to getting unstuck? Go take a nap. So with that, I hope you have found this helpful. Like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends, check back regularly for more great content. As always, head over to dominatetestprep.com if you're looking for additional help, especially for the stress piece, right? You do need to learn all the formulas and practice problems, and I need to teach you all of the stuff you need to know that's cramming in your brain, and then yes, take some rest, but we have comprehensive prep courses for whichever standardized test you are preparing for. Would love to work with you. So check those out over at dominatetestprep.com. Uh, but again, I'll leave you to go take a little bit of a rest before you get back to it. I'm going to go do the same. So I will sign, sign off for now. Take care, everyone.